it's time for Spiritual Awakening Radio. A satsang without walls, a classroom without walls, a spiritual gathering without walls, all in the name of wisdom, all for the love of wisdom and radio. My name is James Bean. My website is spiritualawakeningradio.com. If you visit my website, you'll be able to click on the contact tab and send me an email if you'd like to uh, if you'd like to make any if you'd like to make any comments uh, ask any questions or interact share any information you'd like at the website there is a link to the podcast section you can listen to or download podcasts on demand healthylife.net positive talk radio stores uh, podcasts of all the recent shows for about three months online so Go ahead and download MP3s of past editions of Spiritual Awakening Radio. You can access blogs, articles as well at my website. I have an e-library where you can access many online books. There is a donate button on the website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. This week's program is part five in my series, The Origins of Santmat, The Path of the Masters, the Masters of India, the Sant Satgurus of India. A bit lost in the ethers, lost in the weeds of Indian history, perhaps, but hopefully laying a very solid foundation for future shows to come, delving into the ethics, spirituality, poetry and meditation instructions of the masters now that we have established a little bit of history of the family tree of various saints of india and explored some questions such as the origins of the five names the history of the masters in india the identity of sant tulsi sahib's guru the family tree of past masters the past uh, history and origins and origins of these uh, masters Kabir, Dharam Das, Charumani Nam, which is uh, the name of Dharam Das's son, Sat Sahib, the guru of Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar, the, uh, who was uh, the likely guru of Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. And on today's program, I want to share some spiritual passages from uh, this family tree of masters I've been discussing in recent weeks some spiritual poetry, wisdom, and meditation instructions, a kind of sampler, if you will, from Kabir, the Kabir literature, Dharam Das, Sat Sahib, Darya Sahib of Bihar, Telsi Sahib of Hathras, and some of his spiritual successors up to the living present on uh, part five, today's edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio, a satsang, and a classroom, a spiritual gathering without walls. This is from Rabindranath Tagore's collection of Kabir poems. Tagore, of course, was himself a famous spiritual Bengali poet, and he collected, he called an incredible collection of Kabir poems called Songs of Kabir many decades ago, and it's still one of the most amazing books of Kabir poetry and eloquence. This is called The Soul's Return to the Ocean of Love. How could the love between thee and me sever, as the leaf of the lotus abides on the water? So thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. As the night bird gazes all night, contemplating the moon, so thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. From the beginning until the ending of time, there is love between thee and me. And how shall such love be extinguished? Kabir says, as the river enters into the ocean, so my heart touches thee. Guru Kabir from Songs of Kabir. Arranged, edited by Rabindranath Tagore. A collection of 100 poems. 
some of the very best. If you were marooned on a desert island, that book might be one that I would take with me to that island. Or if I was hopping on board uh, H.G. Wells' time machine and only had room to take a few books with me back into time or into the future, as the case may be, that might be on my list. It is a free online book these days. I have a link to it in the Kabir section of my e-library, which I have linked via the library tab of my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. Kabir had a spiritual successor, it is said, by the name of Sant Dharamdas, who was a trader, a very wealthy merchant and banker. And Dharamdas is sort of a, a stand-in in the Dharamdasi literature for a religious person, a person of the law, Dharam Das uh, includes the word Dharma in the original Hindi. Dharma Das, if you will. From his very boyhood, he was a very religious minded person given to devotion, a person following the laws and ethics of Hinduism, albeit in an idol worship sort of way. And so he, he stands for the soul who grows up in a religious context under the law, if you will, and then was eventually awakened to a higher way by his uh, spiritual master. He eventually met Guru Kabir. So it's a bit paralleling the story of Rumi meeting Shams of Tabriz. You know, you have a, a fairly righteous person, but limited by law, limited by the mind, a dweller in the matrix, sort of devout, religious, spiritual, but with a limited system. And then he meets his spiritual master who opens a portal to a whole other world, which is beyond laws and customs and rituals and temples and fasting and other tiresome practices and beliefs and talk about the prophecies uh, and future of the world and the end of the age and all of these annoying and tiresome concepts that keep getting trotted out age after age after age until people turn to dust and blow away same as it ever was is there not something more we may ask and when one encounters the living teacher, a portal opens up and a whole new reality opens up that goes beyond holidays and fasting and rituals and bowing and saying this and believing that and doing this and all of the, the predictable cut and dried ritual of religion and uh, it's time to transcend. It's time to encounter something living and something more, something beyond rituals, rites, and ceremonies, and types and shadows, to go from the world of law and theory to a divine realm of love and grace. This is a very charming story of Dharma Das or Dharma Das encountering his spiritual master, Guru Kabir. The story of ants in a burning log. Dharma Das was extremely devout and practiced the rules of charity toward the poor and guests. One day, Dharma Das or Dharma Das arrived at Mathura on the tour of a sacred bathing place. He was on some sort of religious pilgrimage, going to a place of bathing or baptism. After bathing in the river, he set about preparing his food. When he looked at the fire, he saw that an army of ants was desperately trying to escape from a burning log. He was filled with compassion and vowed not to eat the food. He put it on a plate 
and went out to find a suitable person to give the food to. Just then, Kabir arrived in Mathura. Dharmdas offered the food to Kabir. A stranger to him at that point, Kabir turns and says to him, Listen, merchant Dharmdas, when you were making this food, millions of ants were killed. Do you want to burden me with all the sin? As Kabir spoke, all the rice grains on the plate turned into ants and began to crawl back to the ground. Dharmdas then asked Kabir, Who, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Kabir says, In this Kali Yuga, my name is Kabir. I gave you a boon in a previous life. For this reason, I have come here to enlighten you. Unquote. This is the story of Dharamdas's encounter with who was to become his spiritual master, Guru Kabir, Sant Kabir. What an introduction this is, right? What an incredible uh, introduction uh, to Kabir in the life of Sant Dharamdas, who eventually uh, becomes a good disciple, Gurumuk disciple, as they say, a faithful disciple and devotee, initiate, to the point where Kabir appoints him as a spiritual successor to be the next master of the lineage that he is founding. A very supernatural type Kabir is portrayed in this story. You know, in a past life I worked with you and here I am again to pick up where I left off, Dharam Das here to enlighten you in this life too. In this Kali Yuga age, this epoch of time, I go by the name of Kabir. You know, that is a very supernatural guy he is encountering there in the person of Guru Kabir. Dharmdas's son was Charumani Nam, who eventually uh, becomes a spiritual master as well, a successor to Dharmdas later on, just to fill in the blanks of history and uh, grow the family tree, this particular branch of the Sant tree, if you will, by describing the next master. And according to the various things I've read, Guru Kabir was part of that too, that he, he it was his instruction that Charumani Nam would become the next uh, spiritual master after Sant Dharamdas. Part of a hymn of Sant Dharamdas, a, a rare thing to find in the English language. I only know of three or four hymns in one book published in India, and, and that's it. It's a rare thing indeed to encounter anything in English of Sant Dharamdas compositions. Sant Dharamdas says, My Satguru has come to me today as my honored guest. I shall sacrifice before him my body, mind, and life. On hearing that my Satguru is coming, I wander hither and thither, elated beside myself with a joy. I place a throne of sandalwood on which the Satguru takes his seat. I put a flower garland around his neck and remain engaged in contemplating his form like the moon bird looking intently at the moon. This next reading comes from a text known as the Anurag Sagar, not literally written by Kabir, uh, but by various disciples or perhaps Dharamdas or Charumani Nam, we really don't know. Uh, there is a history book about the Kabir Panth in India which says that various texts emerged in the uh, 18th uh, century, uh, certain books, Brahm, Nairupan, Anurag Sagar, Anmar Mul, and other sacred texts. So all of these writings were not literally written by Kabir. The literature of the Dharamdas Kabir Panth reminds me a little bit of a text known as the Corpus Hermeticum. All of these works attributed to this kind of cosmic figure by the name of Hermes Trismegistus. But then they're not all written by one guy. There, there are many volumes, too many for one person to have written, 
uh, written over different decades, uh, perhaps even different centuries, and, and it becomes a, a corpus of literature all about Kabir, all about his life and teachings and meditation practice, yes, uh, but not all literally written by Kabir, since uh, Kabir was not a writer, not someone literate and who wrote, but had disciples who did, including uh, Dharam Das and uh, his uh, spiritual successors. So this body of literature eventually emerges called the Kabir Sagar, the Ocean of Kabir, uh, many, many volumes, uh, and one of them is known as the Anurag Sagar, the Ocean of Love, a kind of, not not only was it not written by Kabir or written during the time of Kabir, but it's a more complex document that sort of sums up the teachings of Kabir, uh, formulated over time. Uh, very much like a, a third century Gnostic gospel summing up the teachings of Christ. You know, it's, it's something not beginning the tradition, but something looking back and reviewing all of the teachings and literature and as it has developed and kind of summing it all up. So it's a somewhat later text and is considered to be a great spiritual classic in the Sant tradition. The Gnostic Demiurge, Kal Naringen, the ego mind matrix, perceiving poorly in a realm of illusion. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh once said, the individual mind is call on a small scale. It's call's agent, an agent of the mind, attached to every soul to keep it from the eye focus, the third eye center, and to keep it entangled in this world, unquote. So here you have the conspiracy, the matrix uh, situation of the soul wearing the mind. And as the soul is connected to the spiritual realm, the mind is connected to the mind matrix and is a somewhat more limited state. And this can be interpreted as a kind of cosmic conspiracy to ensnare souls in lower realms of time, space, and illusion. Very much in harmony with a tradition further to the West known as Gnosticism, which too has a kind of cosmic false god, false self, called the, the Demiurge, a kind of lesser god, who also likes to ensnare souls and, and uh, connect to their energy to keep his own little kingdom, his own realm going for a while. Same, same story, only another name. Kal Naringen equals the Demiurge. The Demiurge is the Kal Naringen and the, the story of souls incarnating in worlds of time and space is the story of this kind of contest between the negative power and the positive power. The god of light and the Manichaean god of darkness uh, and this struggle over the soul. Will the soul awaken during this life or will it remain asleep in the matrix? A lot of both gets to happen over lifetime after lifetime after lifetime of living lives in this realm of time and space. Kabir says to Sant Dharam Das, listen to the signs of those who have Sat Nam within them, the true name within them. They will not be affected by Kal and will not have lust, anger, egoism, and greed in them. Giving up attachment and desires, they will always keep the words of the Satguru in their heart. As the snake keeps the jewel on its head, in the same way the disciple should always keep the master's teachings on his head. A passage from the Anurag Sagar. Or Sagar. Kabir says to Dharam Das, if one meets the master giving up everything of his own, that fortunate one climbs the stairs of truth. If one catches attachment, illusion awakens, and that unfortunate one gives up all devotion and knowledge. You are the essence of Sat Purush. You are the essence of God. You have come into the world to take on the work of awakening the souls. If you yourself give up faith in the Master and looking at the things of the world, you get attached to them, 
then where is the place for the souls? A, a dialogue between Kabir and Dharamdas in the Anurag Sagar, the most Gnostic scripture of India. Who's gonna save the souls if you yourself are caught up in illusion too, O Dharam Das? More from the Anurag Sagar after these messages. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio this week, The Origin of Satmat, The Path of the Masters, Part 5. Exploring the family tree, the teachings and literature of these various masters, Kabir, Dharam Das, and we'll work our way up to 2015 and soon to be 2016 after these messages. Welcome back to Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. This week's program, Part 5 in my series on the origins of Sant Mat, the path of the masters. This week, sampling the literature of the family tree of masters and saints in this lineage of teachers. Kabir, Dharam Das, Charumani Nam, Sat Sahib, Darya Sahib, Telsi Sahib, and some of his successors and their successors up to the living present. Before the break, a bit about, I uh, was going into uh, a little bit about Sant Dharam Das, some of his training, where at one point Guru Kabir says, if you are ensnared in the illusion of the physical world, and you, you are my successor to be, who's going to rescue the souls? You know, if, if you need rescuing, how are you going to help people uh, in the world yourself? It, it's, it's like Moses. If Moses is in captivity and uh, isn't uh, uh, free, how is he going to guide the Israelites out of Egypt on their journey toward the promised land? So without the master being the spiritual mentor, guide, and preceptor, who's going to guide souls? Uh, Kabir was asking Dharam Das at one point during his uh, training. According to this great spiritual classic of India known as the Ocean of Love, called uh, also known as uh, the Anurag Sagar, also called the Anurag Sagar. Anurag means love, and Sagar means ocean. The Ocean of Love. After Sant Dharam Das was Charumani Nam, there may be some hymns of his in Hindi. I'm not sure, but I don't currently have access to any of those in English. That would really be pushing it. <laughs> that would really be almost defying the laws of physics. Perhaps I'll spot something sometime. But at some point in this line of Kabir masters, Dharam Das lineage, this Dharam Dasi lineage of Kabir, at some point there was a guru by the name of Sat Sahib, that's the name that he is given by Darya Sahib. And Darya, in his writings, quotes his spiritual master, Sat Sahib. And here's a couple of passages from Sat Sahib. You have been given the seal to imprint the souls, and you know that the transaction is carried on through the true name, or Sat Nam. It's almost a similar conversation as uh, between Kabir and Dharamdas. Here, Sat Sahib is talking to his spiritual successor to be, Darya Sahib, uh, giving him instructions on how to be a spiritual master, how to guide other souls, to initiate them and uh, guide them toward the light and the sound. Sat Sahib says, Whoever comes bearing the imprint of your hand, I will take him to the other shore. So here this master is saying that those that you initiate in the future, I will guide, I will take them to the spiritual realm. Uh, and that's something that masters sometimes uh, do, or the master of the master sometimes does that. Sat Sahib says, Priceless indeed is my name. 
let one hold fast to it with proper concentration. Such a person, Kal, once again, Kal Narinjan, the demiurge, the false god of illusion of the matrix, um, near such a person, Kal shall not go. While rising or sitting, let him fix his attention on it, on, on the name, and let him develop love for the divine light within. Let him abandon all deceptive worship of the gods and goddesses. Let him be absorbed in his real Lord, realizing him to be the truth. While rising and setting, the Supreme Lord should be the center of his attention, and let him remain merged into the sound current. By taking refuge under the truth in such a way, he will certainly overcome Kal. That's a quote from Sat Sahib, the spiritual master of Sant Darya Sahib of Bihar. Speaking of uh, the uh, spiritual practice of the Sant tradition of India, the repetition of a sacred name of God or names, the contemplation of the divine light merging into the divine sound, which is also a meditation practice, merging into the sound current. And this is how one defeats Kal, the mind matrix, which is kind of a metaphor for overcoming the thoughts of your mind when you attempt to meditate. To transcend your mind is transcending the local manifestation of Kal Narinjan, limited perception of mind connected to a greater universal mind matrix. So when you calm down, get centered, and successfully transcend thought in your meditation, that's what that means. That's what overcoming call means. It's a metaphor that that struggle, that cosmic contest between the God of illusion and the God of truth translates into everyday life as being able to sit down and successfully meditate and transcend one's thought in meditation practice, as opposed to coming down with what some people do, a belief that it is impossible for me to meditate. Yours truly, Kal Narinjan. It is impossible for you to be enlightened. Give up. You know, it's kind of like the devil sitting on your left shoulder. Give up. You're not worthy. You know, that's kind of the same, same contest between the good angel and the bad angel. Uh, you're not able to meditate. You're not good enough. Uh, that's never a divine voice speaking to you, saying s such things as that. The positive power is saying, uh, you can step out of that false belief and enter into uh, the world of meditation. Uh, if you only know that you can. Hello. <laughs> and then it is true for you. If you step out of that mind matrix, then you can step into the divine realm by way of meditation practice. Stay tuned for more Spiritual Awakening Radio. After the break, I will share some verses of Sant Doria Sahib of Bihar. Spiritual Awakening Radio, a satsang without walls, a classroom without walls, a library without walls as well, as I like to quote from various rare spiritual books that you can't even find in bookstores, uh, some of which you can find uh, on the web. I have an e-library where I try and make these things available. Just go to my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com, click on the library tab and scroll down and you'll see lots of interesting free books available, one click away, making all of this research available to anyone. Spirituality, the mystic verses, or shabs, as they're called in India, of Sant Dorya Sahib of Bihar, the next master in this lineage I've been describing as of late, exploring the history of India, the origins of Sant Mat the path of the masters, tracing recent masters back further in time. 
Our next uh, saint is Darya Sahib of Bahar, a spiritual successor of Sat Sahib, who in turn was a successor of someone in the Dharam Das branch of Kabir Panth, a successor of Charumani Nam or Darya. Uh, uh, Darya's master might have been a successor of uh, Dharam Das or, or some other teacher, it's not really known, but it's in this Dharmdas Kabir line of masters for sure. And you can kind of tell the the, the teachings are pretty much uh, along the lines of this book called the Anurag Sagar, this contest between the Lord of Illusion, the negative power known as Kal Narinjan, and the positive power or supreme being referred to as Sat Purush. So it's a uh, it's, uh, consistent teaching from generation to generation. Darya Sahib of Bihar says, let the practitioner be brave like a lion and let him not forget the holy repetition or simran, the repetition of the divine name. Even for a moment, let him be on alert with his drawn out bow and arrow. The thief, Kal, can never come near such a one. That's a verse from Sant Doria Sahib of Bihar. Actually, not from the one and only book in English uh, called uh, Doria Sahib, Saint of Bihar, but from the Sant Doria Mission website, the one and only website that I know of featuring the teachings of Doria Sahib. Doria says, keep on repeating the holy names with tenacity and remove the impurities by repeating the names. Simran is the meditation practice of repeating one's uh, sacred names, the names that one is given at the time of their initiation by their living teacher, their living master. With impurities removed, says Doria, one becomes pure and wisdom dawns upon such a one in full. Darya says, practice the repetition of the true names, which alone is of value. Abandon the taste for worldly enjoyment and attain thereby the inner bliss. Have kindness in your heart. Look with compassion. Being detached, brush aside all worldly delusions and take refuge under the Satguru's holy feet, which is the kingdom of eternal bliss. Disregarding sufferings and afflictions, cut off worldly snares and be firmly absorbed in contemplation, which alone is of value. Thereby the inner lotus will blossom, nectar will flow, and the inner sky will resound with melody, hearing which call will flee away, says Daria. And this is sort of a poetic way of saying that you transcend mind when you contemplate the inner sound, when you meditate upon the inner sound. This is a great way to transcend mind, which is poetically described as call fleeing away. Sant Doria says, There the dazzling light will shine and the true sound will resound, which will destroy heavy sins or karmas, and place a divine canopy over your head. Some teachings of Sant Doria Sahib of Bihar. Next, Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. I believe that Doria Sahib of Bihar was the guru of Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. So next, our next stop is Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. Seek to see God now, liberation during this life. Says Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, in this life the concept of salvation all describe. To meet the Lord by dying while living, none discloses. They all speak of the goal of salvation after death. How to attain it while living, no one says. Were they to reveal the method of attaining release while living, then alone would Tulsi be convinced of their words. 
who speak after seeing with their own eyes and teach the method of salvation during life are of the stage and stature of saints, for they reveal the quintessence of the soul. That's a very key poem or hymn of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, kind of critiquing the religions of his day. Everyone talks about salvation after death, but as for attaining it right now, no one says. And uh, this is always the critique of the living master. You know, the, the masters say, these folks are always slaves of tradition, rites, and rituals, and they speak of a faraway God and a far-off afterlife, after death, then the reality gets to be revealed. But as to how to sit down and partake of the divine realm here and now, no one says. The mystic is always dissatisfied with cheap talk and promises about future kingdoms and second comings and theories and theologies. Uh, you know, like when you go into a restaurant, you are given the menu, but you're not satisfied just by reading the menu. You want to order something and partake of a meal. You don't want to just read stories about how other people in the 17th century sat down and ate a great meal and were satisfied of their hunger. You want to satisfy your hunger, too. So not just a, a menu or holy text. You want to actually partake of the divine here and now yourself. Stay tuned for more Spiritual Awakening Radio after these messages. Spiritual Awakening Radio is heard every week at this time. My name is James Bean of SpiritualAwakeningRadio.com. My email address is James at SpiritualAwakeningRadio.com. After the time of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, there were several successors. Uh, some of those successors, I've never read anything by them, uh, never heard anything from them directly. Uh, there may be writings in Hindi. There was Sir Swami, who looked a lot like Tulsi Sahib. There was Ram Krishna, not to be confused with other people that have the name Ram Krishna or Rama Krishna, a different person by the name of Ram Krishna. There was Gudhari Sahib, who founded a, an ashram in Lucknow, and Sir Swami became the successor in Hathras at the Tulsi Sahib Mandir. Swamiji Maharaj of Agra, who, who was in charge of the Agra satsang, eventually founded the Radha Swami faith in 1861. And blessed as an infant, Baba Devi Sahib also became a great saint of Sant Maud and eventually published the Ghat Ramayan of Tulsi Sahib. He was the first person to publish it after he uh, got older, and he was uh, greatly devoted to uh, Sant Tulsi Sahib. There are writings of Baba Devi Sahib that have been translated into English, as well as, of course, uh, Swamiji Maharaj of Agra. Swamiji, in his Sarbachan Radha Swami poetry, says, Sit still, and you will reach your destination. Walk fast, and you will go nowhere. That's a beautiful verse from his Sarbachan Radha Swami poetry, published in Agra, speaking of how in meditation you make spiritual progress. And that's the, the, the place, only at the third eye center will something occur. Only at the third eye, only by going within, will something be achieved. Will you grow spiritually? You can hurry and scurry about in the outer world of the five senses, but reaching the third eye center, that's when something occurs. That's when you make progress and begin your spiritual journey. Baba Devi Sahib says, do not live a single day without inner meditation. What is important is to not live a single day in life without practicing meditation, he says. All the experiences of pains and pleasures of the world, 
one has to go through notwithstanding. Meditate every single day. There's also another famous saying, the last words of Baba Devi Sahib, when he said, the world is illusion, practice meditation. That, that was his dying sentence when he left this world. The world is illusion, practice meditation. Baba Devi Sahib also said, God and love are otherwise one and the same. In short, bhakti, or love, is such a thing without which no worldly or heavenly acts can be accomplished. He alone is a human being in the true sense who knows the key to, or the secret of love, the secret of bhakti. He whose heart is devoid of the spirit of love is not even an animal. He is rather inferior to that. Of course, animals have love too, so, uh uh-oh, less than that. (laughs) So without love, we are nothing. Love is the power of the universe, and love is required in order to get anything done in any realm. In this world, uh, achieving something, building something, creating something, you have to love doing that. You have to have a passion for that. And in order to go within and be good at meditating, you have to develop love for meditating, to have a certain degree of bhakti in order for that to be a successful endeavor as well. Baba Devi Sahib also had a lot of profound things to say about the sound, inner sound meditation. He said, it is the highest duty of every individual to acquire experiential knowledge of this shabd or sound current and to investigate or explore the origin or source from where this sound flows out. The other music or sound is internal and the way to listen to this sound is by focusing our attention on the inner sound, which is ringing within each one of us. Shab, Shabda, or the inner sound current, is a highly precious wealth in the life of every human being. So long as this Shabd, or sound current, is present within a human being, they are alive. As soon as the sound exits, it is the end of him. There is a beautiful story that uh, is told about Swamiji Maharaj of Agra, who was also a successor of uh, Tulsi Sahib of Hathras and part of the Tulsi Sahib satsang. Uh, The guru that he was closest to was Gudhari Sahib of, well, he spent time in Agra, but he also uh, moved to Lucknow and eventually settled in Lucknow and had a an ashram, created an ashram. Swamiji actually donated to help uh, build that ashram in Lucknow. And so as this guru, uh, Sant Gudhari Sahib, Maharaj Gudhari Sahib, was uh, dying, uh, the sound stopped uh, in his meditations. And so uh, Swamiji, not wanting him to leave, wanted to put off his uh, death a little bit. And so he was called to be with uh, Gudhari Sahib and actually helped to bring the sound back so he could continue meditating on the sound. In other words, to put off, to to delay a little bit the time of his passing. So hearing the sound and being a a living human being were kind of intertwined. And uh, for this spiritual master by the name of Gudhari Sahib, another famous disciple of Tulsi Sahib, when the sound disappeared during his meditation, this was a, a sign that the sound was withdrawing and he was about to leave the world uh, permanently. And Swamiji helped to uh, reconnect him to the sound again, to give him a few more hours or another day or two you know, for them to be together before his passing. An amazing story about uh, those two uh, great saints. And also the power of the sound current the power of the inner sound that's present in human beings as long as they are alive and is a great wealth, a great uh, boon to meditate upon the inner sound. 
on next week's edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio, I will share readings. We'll move closer and closer to the 21st century as I continue to explore the family tree of the Masters. Thanks for listening.